Hi, this is Estelle Traingove and this is my video on nodal analysis for the electric circuits courses ELEN 1000 and ELEN 2008 at the University of the Witwatersrand. Nodal analysis is a circuit analysis technique in which we use Kirchhoff's current law to simplify a circuit by reducing the number of unknowns in that circuit so that we need less simultaneous equations to be able to work out any quantity within that circuit. The first two steps of nodal analysis are to select a reference node and the reference node will be our zero point and then we're going to label all the other nodes and we're going to find the node voltages of these nodes with respect to the reference node. In the circuit that we're going to use as an example of how to do nodal analysis, I've already selected the reference node, so the reference node I've marked here in red now, and I've already labeled the other nodes. So I've labeled this one V1, and I've labeled this node V2, and I've labeled this node V3. And remember that all of these dots form part of the reference node because that's one expanded node and this also forms part of V2 because it's an V3 sorry because it's an expanded node and this forms part of V1 because this is also an expanded node so if we look back now at our list of steps for doing nodal analysis, we've already selected a reference node and we've labeled the other nodes so we know what their names are. And now we can carry on to the next step of checking whether there are any voltage sources between the reference node and another node because then it means we know that voltage already and it's one less thing to calculate. So if we look at our example we can see that this 9 volt source is between V1 and 0 volts so the voltage between this point and this point is 9 volts and therefore we know already that therefore V1 is equal to 9 volts. So the only two unknowns that remain in our circuit are V2 and V3, so we need to solve for V2 and V3. So going back to our steps, we've now completed step number three, and we've checked whether there were any voltage sources between the reference node and another node, and we saw that in terms of this step, we know that V1 is equal to 9 volts in the circuit that we're using as an example. And now we go on to step number 4, which is to check whether there are any super nodes in our circuit, which is consists of a voltage source between two non-reference nodes. If we look at this circuit, we can see that the 9-volt source is the only voltage source. There are no other voltage sources that are connected between two non-reference nodes, so there are no super nodes in this circuit. And we'll do an example in another clip of a circuit that has a supernode. We've now done step number four. We've checked whether there are any supernodes 
and there were no supernodes in this case. So now we can go on to the very important step of applying Kirchhoff's current law at each non-reference node. And then we are going to use Ohm's law to express each of those currents in the Kirchhoff's current law equations in terms of those node voltages that we defined in step number two. Now, we already know that the voltage at V1 is 9 volts. And so let's move on to node voltage V2. So at V2, by Kirchhoff's current law, remember Kirchhoff's current law says that the sum of the currents flowing into the node is equal to the sum of the currents flowing out of the node. So at V2 by Kirchhoff's current law, you can see that we have I2 plus I4 is equal to I3 because we've got I2 flowing into the node, I4 flowing into the node, and then we've got I3 flowing out of the node. Now we're going to express each of these currents in terms of the node voltages. So you can see that current I2 is flowing. The current always in a resistor flows from the higher voltage to the lower voltage because remember that a resistor always absorbs power. So there's always a voltage drop across a resistor. And in this case, the higher voltage is V1, which is 9 volts, and the lower voltage is V2. So if we use Ohm's law, we can express I2 in terms of the node voltages, and it is 9 minus V2 divided by 1,000 ohms. So just to make sure that you know where that comes from, it's 9 volts minus V2 is the voltage across this resistor. And by Ohm's law, the current I is equal to the voltage over the resistance. So in this case, the resistance is 1 kilo ohm, which I've written as 1,000 ohms plus I4 which you can see this current is flowing in this direction so V3 is the higher voltage V2 is the lower voltage and the resistance is 100 ohms so if we write it in terms of Ohm's law we've got V3 minus V2 divided by 100. And similarly, I3 is the current flowing from V2 to 0 volts. So I3 we can write as V2 minus 0 divided by 2000. So at node V2, we've now applied Kirchhoff's current law and we've used Ohm's law to express the currents in terms of the node voltages. So now we're going to apply step 7, which is to simplify the expression and collect like terms, and then we're going to go back to step number 5 and repeat steps 5, 6, and 7 again until we have enough expressions 
to solve for all our unknowns. So in this case, our unknowns are V2 and V3. We have two unknowns, so we will need two simultaneous expressions to solve for those two unknowns. So let's apply step 7 to this equation and simplify it. I'm going to multiply it by 2000 and then it becomes 18 minus 2v2 plus 20v3 minus 20v2 and that is equal to v2. So let's collect all the like terms and put all the known quantities on the right hand side of the equation. So that gives us 18 over there, which takes care of this term. And then we've got 23v2, which takes care of this term, this term, and this term, and minus 20v3, which takes care of this term, and that is our equation number one. Now we do the same thing at node v3 over here. So at v3 by Kirchhoff's current law, we can see that we have the 2 milliamp flowing into the node and we've got the I5 flowing into the node and we've got I4 flowing out of the node. So by Kirchhoff's current law, we've got I5 plus 0 0.002 amps and all that is equal to I4 which is flowing out of the node. If we write that those currents in terms of um, Ohm's law using the node voltages then you can see that I5 is flowing from V1 to V3 through that 700 ohm resistor. So I5 we can write as 9 volts because remember V1 is 9 volts minus V3 divided by 700 plus 0 0.002 amps and that is equal to as we had before over here I4 is equal to V3 minus V2 divided by 100 ohms and then if we multiply this out by 700 then we get 9 volts minus V3 plus 1.4 is equal to 7V3 minus 7V2. And then if we do our last step, step 7, and we gather like terms, then we get minus 7v2 plus 8v3 is equal to 10.4. And that gives us our second equation. And if you look at these two equations now, you can see that we've got two unknowns. We've got V2 here and we've got V2 here. 
and we've got V3 here, and we've got V3 here. So we can solve these sim simultaneous equations to find V2 and V3. And that's just simple maths, but if you solve for V2 and V3, you will find that V2 is equal to 8 volts, and V3 is equal to 8.3 volts. And that is the end of this clip.